ladies and gentlemen, this is it, the very last video from my trip to Malaysia back in December of 2019. By the way, if you're at all wondering why I'm dressed like a middle-aged man, it's because I just got off of work a few minutes ago and uh, they need us to dress nicely, you know, business casual attire for work, so that's why I'm dressed like this. Anyway, this flight that we took was on December 29th, 2019, so not only was this my last flight of the year, it was also my last flight of the entire decade. And furthermore, it was my last time flying before the whole pandemic came and ruined everything. So since this flight that you're about to watch, I have not flown since. Um, it's been, what, almost seven and a half, eight months since this flight. So that's the longest I've gone without flying ever in my life. So it's pretty crazy time. Hopefully that changes soon. By the way, this airport behind me is, is not related to this video at all. It's just my hometown airport. I just needed some sort of nice backdrop for this intro. That's why I'm here in the first place. Uh, this flight, quite a good flight, nothing much to say about it. I really enjoyed making this video and uh, you guys are going to enjoy this video for sure. I apologize that it's coming out a bit late. I promise you it's going to be well worth it. I invite you to please stick around till the end. And if you haven't already, please be sure to hit that subscribe button, smash the like button. We're trying to hit 8,000 subscribers by August 15th. That's going to be our 8 year anniversary on YouTube. So if we can hit 8,000 by then, that would be so awesome. So thank you all very much for tuning in. I invite you to please sit back, relax, and enjoy. One more flight in this amazing winter break vacation officially comes to an end. Tonight we're flying from Dallas to Chicago on board American Airlines' Boeing 787 Dreamliner. This flight will be around 1 hour 40 minutes long, covering a distance of... hang on. Hey Siri, what's the distance between Dallas Fort Worth Airport and Chicago O'Hare Airport? Uhahare International Airport is about 931 miles from Dallas, Fort Worth International Airport by car. Okay, so around 930 miles. Thank you Siri. We originally arrived at gate D25 on an ultra long haul flight from Hong Kong. This connecting flight to Chicago would depart from gate D30. Of course, because we came in on an international flight, we would have to go through quite a lengthy transit process which I'll explain shortly. Anyone who arrives into DFW from an international flight, then connects onto another flight will have to go through the same process. The first step is to clear immigration, which for us only took 45 minutes to an hour. Assuming that you don't get detained and that US border control lets you in, you'll then proceed to baggage claim, and here's where it gets a little inconvenient. Everyone, no matter what, has to reclaim their bags, even if they are connecting passenger. If you do have an onward connection with American, as I did, there will be an area right after baggage claim for you to recheck your bags. Finally, you'll have to re-clear security, which for us took another 30 minutes, but do bear in mind that timings will vary. And there you go, that's a brief overview of the transit experience in Dallas. Not a very smooth experience by any means, but also not super terrible. We reached gate D30 right as boarding started. This will be my third flight on the Boeing 787, and the sheer irony of this is that, while the 787 is a wide body jet meant to fly on long haul routes, every single flight I've taken on it has been with American Airlines between Dallas and Chicago, or vice versa. Today's aircraft is November 810 Alpha November, which was delivered brand new to American Airlines in September 2015, making it 4.2 years old at the time of this flight. Unfortunately, this aircraft has been stored in Tulsa since March 10th. I think you can figure out the reason why. American's Boeing 787-8 features 234 seats, consisting of 20 in business, 28 in premium economy, 48 in main cabin extra, and 138 in main cabin. Today I'm sitting as far back as you could possibly sit on this plane, in seat 31A. Apparently Seat Guru thinks that row 31 sucks because of how close it is to the rear galley, but we'll see later on if it's really that bad. 
Each economy class seat features an adjustable headrest and is fairly comfortable, even on long haul flights. Economy class on the 787 is mostly laid out in a 333 configuration, but because the aircraft fuselage curves inwards towards the back, rows 30 and 31 are set up in a 232 layout. One amazing advantage of this unusual configuration is that seats 30A, 31A, 30L, and 31L have huge amounts of extra space between the seat and the wall. You could use this space to store your bags or even make a little bed and sleep down here. And spoiler alert, I did exactly that. The best part is that because these are normal economy class seats, reserving them online is free of charge and you don't have to pay extra to select them. Unfortunately, because of all the extra space, these seats are a little distance away from the window. Furthermore, the window alignment at seats 31A and 31L isn't that great either. Each seat of course comes equipped with a personal entertainment screen, and like I've mentioned countless times in the past, the screens are motion sensitive, and whenever you wave your hand in front, the USB port and headphone jack will light up. This feature is only helpful during the dark when you can't see anything. The seats also feature a remote control, universal power outlet, tray table, seat pocket, and 31 inches of pitch if this were a regular seat. But because of all the extra space to my side, I have a little bit more room. Inside the seat pocket, you'll find the safety card, American Way magazine, and the Nexos magazine, que esta completamente en español. Due to the current circumstances, the magazines have been removed, and the only thing you'll find in the seat pocket nowadays is the safety card. I had no idea at the time, but this would be my last time seeing a Qantas A380 for quite a while. Due to the pandemic, Qantas have grounded their entire A380 fleet and don't plan to reactivate them until 2023. This exact plane, VH-OQE, was ferried to Victorville for storage a few weeks ago. Qantas' non-stop Sydney-Dallas flight has been operated by the A380 for over five years, and now that it's been grounded, it's unclear right now if Qantas plans to suspend this route altogether or bring in another aircraft like the 7879 as a temporary replacement.
As you can probably tell from all this flying, I was very tired at this point, so I didn't review the IFE in too much detail. Long story short, it has a really amazing amount of movies, TV shows, music choices, games, and flight information that'll really keep you entertained on the long haul flights. And you can trust me when I say that, since I literally flew their longest route twice and was kept pretty entertained on both flights. Not even 30 minutes after takeoff, snacks are passed out. Today is just the usual pretzels and choice of drink, for which I chose water. The Dreamliner is famous for its huge windows and the fact that instead of having a physical window shade, there is instead a button system which controls the window brightness. Pushing down on the button makes the window darker, while pushing up makes it brighter. Obviously this feature doesn't matter on this flight since it's dark out, but I still thought it was worth a mention. The seatbelt sign remained on for basically the whole flight as we were hitting light turbulence throughout. I can't remember a time when it was ever turned off. Ah yes, the Boston Mountains. A perfect name for a mountain range located absolutely nowhere near Boston. What? If you want to know why they're called the Boston Mountains, here's an excerpt from an article I found that'll give you exactly 10 seconds to read. Okay, time's up. Hopefully you learned something new. This flight was mostly full, as expected from a route as busy as this, but somehow the three seats in the middle of row 31 were left empty. Aside from all the turbulence, there really wasn't anything notable about this flight. Wait, did y'all just see that? Oh, it's, it's just someone who forgot to turn their flash off, okay. Because I was bored, I was playing with the maps a little bit and came across yet another interesting feature. If you tap this little magnifying glass icon, a whole list of world cities pops up. Tapping on any random city name takes you to that city on the map and displays that city's population, elevation, and distance from your location. This is a pretty cool feature, but you know what's not cool? The fact that over 80% of you watching this video aren't even subscribed to the channel. WHAT?! We have seen the evidence! You cannot escape anymore! You're finished! So if you're enjoying this video, I invite you to please take just one second and turn that subscribe button from red to white. And if you want, enable your post notifications so you don't miss future uploads. Thank you. Because I was super bored, I decided to see what it would be like if I used all this extra space as a makeshift sleeping area. As expected, it wasn't super comfortable since I didn't have any blanket or pillow. Also, before you ask, the only reason I felt comfortable doing this was because I had family members sitting in this row. If there were two complete strangers sitting here, then obviously I wouldn't have done it. Not sure why I shot this, but this is how it looks like when you're lying flat on the ground straight up at the ceiling. I guess filming a lot for no reason made the flight go by quite fast, since before I knew it, it was time for descent. Our arrival into Chicago tonight involves us doing one of my most favorite approach patterns. We Chicago people, well, actually I'm not from Chicago, but rather us O'Hare people call this approach pattern the West Flow. This basically means that all traffic lands from the east going towards the west, and part of this pattern involves all flights flying past downtown Chicago on their approach into O'Hare. Since we're arriving from the southwest tonight, we would initially pass south of the airport, fly directly over downtown Chicago, make a 180 over Lake Michigan, and then come into land on runway 28 center. And you're probably wondering, oh wow, are we going to get some aerial shots of downtown Chicago at nighttime? No. Of course, that night it was extremely cloudy, and as we were passing over downtown, you couldn't see anything. It was only until we made the turn over Lake Michigan that I got a brief glimpse of downtown before we flew into more clouds.
This approach gave me flashbacks of our landing in Dallas the week before. If you've seen that video, then you'll remember that visibility in Dallas that day was so bad that our pilots had to conduct an auto land, meaning the plane basically landed itself. Luckily, visibility here in Chicago tonight was much better, and soon enough, the famous grid pattern of Chicago streets came into view as we neared the airport. It's hard to believe that after traveling over 21,000 total miles this trip, we're finally back to where we started just a week earlier. Our trip to Malaysia was absolutely amazing, and before I start crying over the fact that it's over, let me quickly summarize the flight. Overall, the flight was great, and quite a memorable one as well to cap off a whole decade of flying. American has a decent economy class product on their Dreamliners, and I'm still dying to try it out on a much longer route. By the way, sitting in the very back of the plane wasn't that bad either. At times, overhearing the flight attendant conversations did become a little annoying, but otherwise I really liked having all that extra room to stretch out. So the next time you fly the American 787, do try and see if you can reserve one of these seats. Again, the seat numbers are 30A, 31A, 30L, or 31L. Besides the fact that they're in the very back of the plane, I would definitely say that these are some of the best economy class seats on this aircraft. Today we'll be parking at gate K5, which coincidentally enough, is the exact same gate we arrived into when I flew the 787 on this exact same route two years earlier. Thanks so much for joining me today. I really hope you've enjoyed watching the Malaysia trip videos these past few months. In case you missed any, feel free to check out my trip reports playlist where you can find all 43 flight reviews that I've uploaded so far over the last four years. If you enjoyed the video, please don't forget to drop a like and leave a comment. Subscribe if you're new here and enable your post notifications so you don't miss any future uploads. Ladies and gentlemen, there we have it. Winter break 2019 is officially in the history books. Thanks again for tuning in and I'll see you all next time.